Hello and welcome to Really Random Rants. The show where today we are playing a game with Dylan Wesley Snyder. We are Riley. I don't have brains. Wait. Epic fail. Well. I don't have brains. Okay, so with maybe maybe these will with help. Dylan Snyder. Yes, yes. Okay. With, um. So uh. So the game goes where we give him a word and part of a definition. Then we also have the um, a word missing and two other options for words. Um. If he can guess it right, he gets a point. Our good friends Tim and Vic will be keeping track because I have no brains. Um, anyway, so the first one will be... The word is topographical. Okay. Relating to the arrangement or blank representation of the physical features of an area. Okay? Your, op okay. your options are A... Correct. B. Accurate. Or C. Interesting. I'll read, can the, I, I'll read the definition can, again. Thank you, yeah. Relating to the arrangement or blank representation of the physical features of an area. Uh, accurate. B. You're right. Cool. Okay. Yay. You are correct. <laughs> okay, so... The next question. King, the male ruler of an independent blank, especially one who inherits the position by right of birth. Your options are A, kingdom, B, country, or C, state. C, state. What the heck? Okay. Um... Okay, so next one. Sorry. The next one is vagabond. A person who the a person who blanks from place to place without home or job. Your object your options are travels, wanders, or hitchhikes. Definition one more time. A person who wanders from place to place without a home or job. I gave did you the answer, you didn't I not? Me? Yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with B, wanders. What? <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. Alex, get your brain in your head. Okay. Um, it's Vic's turn to read the yes, questions clearly, because I'm going to go hide in the corner. Clearly he hasn't changed since the last interview. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I cannot see it. Okay, um, yeah, no, Tim, you're reading the questions, because I cannot. <laughs> Let's see. Number four. Number four, all right. The word is eat, and it's, the definition is put blank into the mouth and chew and swallow it, or a material something. <laughs> With what? Oh the words okay, so are the, I'm gonna take over the reading again. Something. Okay, I'm gonna go again. Okay. You have that weird. Okay. So. Okay. The definition. The word is eat. Okay. To put blank into the mouth and chew and swallow it. Your objects. Your options are a material, something, or food. Thing or food. Okay, so material, something, or food. Yeah. Oh, this one's interesting. Um, Finally, he's having a hard time. One more time on the definition. Okay. Put blank into the mouth and chew and swallow it. I think it would be over assumptive if it was already food, so I think it's going to be something, B. B? Okay. You're wrong. It was food. Finally, it is food. Okay. You were wrong. Nice. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'll put this in the middle so that everyone can talk. Um, anyway. Well, you're the only one to read the questions because of the view we asked. Right. So. Anyway, so the next one is Riddle. A, okay. A, 
question or statement intentionally phrased as to require ingenuity in ascertaining its answer or meaning, typically represented as a blank. Your options are dare, game, and challenge. C, challenge. S sorry, you're wrong again. Is it game? It's game. Okay, nice. Yeah, okay. The next one is... Definition. Finding or making something definite, distinct, or blank. Your options are obvious, evident, and clear. Uh, one more time. Okay. Through the definition or the options? Definition. definition. Okay. The definition of definition. Okay. The act of defining or making something definite, distinct, or blank. And the options are? Obvious, evident, or clear. I'm going to say clear. What? No. No, you cannot be a wizard. Okay. It's clear, yes. Okay, cool. Okay. The next word I looked up because I thought it was just a name. Kevin. Okay. I looked up the word Kevin. Okay. And the meaning is blank from birth. Your options are Powerful, handsome, and wise. Legitimate definition? Yes. yes. <laughs> okay, so it's either powerful, handsome, or wise from birth. Yes. Okay, I'm going to say that it's going to be wise. I'm sorry, it's handsome. It is handsome. Handsome from birth. <laughs> Kevin means handsome from birth. Kevin James. I know. <laughs> okay. Okay, so now we're going to bring some Latin into this, okay? Okay, fun. Your word is tempus fugit. That's what you fugit. said. Fugit. Fugit? Tempus fugit. Tempus fugit? I don't know. You're the one who looked it up. Okay, tempus fugit. And so it could mean time flies blank, you're having fun. Your options are whilst, while, and when? Ooh, you made that hard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Time flies. What are the options? While, while, and when? Yes. I gotta go simple. When? Oh my! <laughs> yeah. You're right. Correct. Well, okay. Right. So, this one you won't get. Your okay. word is pterodactyl. A blank of the late Jurassic peri period with a long slender neck and a long slender head and neck and a very short tail. Okay? You ready for your okay. words? Yes. Dinosaur, lizard, or pterosaur? Probably right. I won't get this one. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I can't uh, imagine myself getting this. Dinosaur. Ah, uh, you were very close. Pterosaur. It is pterosaur? Okay, interesting. What yeah. exactly is the definition of pterosaur? Uh, I think it's a flying dinosaur. Okay. I'll be cool. right back. Or a giant flying lizard. Um, a giant flying lizard. Next one is Spider-Man. Definition of Spider-Man is a U.S. cartoon, TV, and film character who develops special powers such as great blank and the ability to cling to surfaces after being bitten by a radioactive spider. Okay. Your options are great Strength, great webs, and great precognition. Ah, <coughs> uh -huh, that one's pretty good. Um, I'm gonna 
I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with the. Uh, uh, that was really good because uh, on the first hand, I was thinking, well, he just he has great strength, but precognition is a really nice way of saying spider sense. Um, I'm gonna go with strength, though. You're right. Good job. Okay. Do you have any idea how many he's gotten right? Yeah, yeah I've been keeping track. Six keeping score. Sweetness. Okay. The next one is acting. Okay. You might know a little bit about this. I don't know if I can define it. Okay. Acting is defined as the art or occupation of blank in plays, movies, or television. Your okay. options are telling a story... Performing and becoming a character. Be performing. You're right. Good job. Is that the final one? No. Thank you. No. We have. A, I think five more. Four more? I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> 20 more questions. <laughs> yeah, 20 more questions, okay? You're doomed. Cool. Just keep, keep, keep going. going. Keep okay. Going. Anyway, so. Gargantuan definition. Okay? okay? It's a one word definition. Blank. Your options are very big, immense, or enormous. C, enormous? Yes, you're right. Good job. Cool. Ah, oh, darn. Wait, I said it's a one-word definition, and one of the options is very big. <laughs> ah! 50% chance of getting that one. I'm so close to being smart. Okay. Pig. Pig. Okay. Okay. Pig is a blank, domesticated, hoofed animal with sparse, bristly hair and a flat snout for rooting in the soil. Kept for its meat. Your options are fatty, pink, or omnivorous. One more time on the definition? Okay. A pig is a blank domesticated hoofed animal with sparse bristly hair and a flat snout for rooting in the soil kept for its meat. Mm. The longer definitions are the harder ones. Mm. You have a lot more to process. It, it seems really weird to me that, like, the, of, of the two that I think it is, it seems really weird to me that they would say pink domesticated animal because some pigs aren't out downright pink um i would actually venture to say it's omnivorous you're right cool. you're very right okay you started at this you picked i you, did not pick picked, easy you, ones you picked <laughs> i did not pick no, 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 easy ones look. okay i, I looked up the word about kevin okay it's not easy ones you picked easy hard words <laughs> okay okay your third or fourth one the one about the king yeah that, that, I like that one a lot. That one's good. Okay. Yay. Okay. A rick. A stack of hay, corn, or straw. Yes, I looked up another name. Rick. Oh. <laughs> okay, so a rick is a stack of hay, corn, straw, or similar materials, especially one built into a regular blank and thatched. How is this a name? <laughs> I don't, Rick. I know, but like that definition has nothing. Now to you do have to with restate the, the definition because you totally distracted. Okay, so your options are a is it's one built into a regular blank, uh, a regular pile, shape, or structure. And thatched. Uh, what is A, pile? You're very close, but you're not right. It's shape. Shape? Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay. 
The last one, okay? All right. Mesa. Do you know what a Mesa is? I think so. Okay. Well, you're about to learn to. Learn what it is. A blank, flat-topped hill with steep sides found in landscapes with horizontal strata. Okay, your options are a mesa is a mountain-like hill, a tall hill, or an isolated hill. One full time on the definition. Okay. A mesa is a blank, flat-topped hill with steep sides found in landscapes with horizontal strata. You're welcome. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna go simple on this one too, and I'm gonna say B, tall. Sorry, it was isolated. It is isolated, okay. Yeah. So, so my read for choosing that one was thinking that isolated would come after in a general definition. Okay. Yeah, no, we're, we're trying to break down the words. So I'm doing those things. Oh, okay. Six for us, nine for him on this very small you win. scoreboard. You win by a <laughs> landslide so, of three. Nine. Uh, last time you were here, we talked about Mama Boy. Yes. Yes. So, how is that going? Like, I know it was filmed, obviously, but isn't it getting released on iTunes, I believe, soon? Yes. So, uh, recently we were able to release the film uh, for On Demand uh, with people who are with DirecTV or Dish Network. Um, And so that happened only, like, a couple weeks ago. Now we're going to have our big, like, debut of the film everywhere on iTunes. I think think it opens up to the rest of the on-demands. Uh, and so it's just going to be available to everybody, not just select customers. Um, so yeah, no, it's it's going to be opened up, and that comes. I today is the twenty seventh. I believe that happens right within the first two weeks of May. Not exactly sure of the date yet, but that. Uh, but I'm going to tweet it out as soon as I as soon as I figure out. Um, so that that's coming very soon, which is very exciting. Uh, the other thing I'm getting prepared to see. Uh, I, I worked on a film last year called Flock of Four. Uh, and this happened really recently. I mean, last year, like four months ago. Uh, and so uh, it's called Flock of Four, and it's about jazz music in the '60s, and about these four kids that go out uh, go out for a night on the town in Los Angeles, and are trying to find this one specific jazz musician. Uh, it's a very fun period piece film. Uh, I play a drummer, so I had to learn some drums. Uh, and yeah, so that's gonna be that's. We're going to be able to watch it for the very first time, like the screen, uh, the screening of it, and so hopefully that'll be coming out and premiering, uh, I guess later this year around September maybe. That's really cool. Okay. Yeah. So, so quite a bit going on. Okay. I was going. You were doing a Facebook live stream recently. Correct. And so they, uh, someone asked the question about uh, kicking it spinoff, which you said never got to happen. Could you tell us a little bit about what that would have been like? Sure, yeah. Basically, um, when the third season was starting to wrap up, they wanted to continue to roll. Most shows on Disney Channel don't go four seasons, or at least at the time they didn't. It's becoming more common nowadays. But uh, at the time, it was really unheard of for a show to go four seasons. Um, and so instead of trying to you know, beat the system and go four seasons, they, we were just going to try and go three more in a different show, which is what a lot of, a lot of them do. Um, and so to do that, we would have made a new show uh, based on uh, our, like we have a few episodes of the show where we become spies, uh, and we do like spy missions for like the FBI or the CIA, I think is what we were, uh, the, uh, what we were associated with. Um, but, but it would have been a show entirely based on the the fact that Jack and I uh, were, were spies working for the government, and we were going on all these missions and just to keep things interesting. And no, it didn't ever it didn't ever happen because uh, another uh, another show uh, kind of 
saw the idea, took it into their own hands, and had it made before we could. So, aww, um, it was it was a fun idea though. And we, I mean, the two episodes of that that we did get to film were just awesome. Just really cool stuff we had going on there. Will those episodes ever be released? They were. Uh, we ended up making them kicking it episodes instead. Oh, okay. Any new movies that you might be hoping to film in the future? There's a lot of movies I'm hoping to film in the future. But as of right now, what I've been doing is uh, I actually work uh, on this web series right now. And uh, it's called Astrid Clover, and we put out an episode every week. Uh, and I am the sound guy, so I'm, I'm, I like take the sound for them. I do a lot of filming for people as well right now, and I do a lot of film editing. Uh, so I've kind of been working on all fronts of the industry, behind camera, in front of camera, uh, as of recently, just to get as much uh, experience as possible. Okay, cool. Which which have you found you enjoy doing most? It depends on the project who I'm working with yeah, greatly. Because, you know, there's sometimes you get you get onto, onto something and the people that you're working with just maybe aren't nice. Uh, and if that's the case, you want to be an actor. Um, you know, if they if they are nice, then sometimes it's fun to not be the actor, not be the one in front of the camera, and just be like working to make that project exactly what it is, uh, which is something in- incredible and it's exhilarating. Um, recently, I actually filmed a, a music video, and I was the camera operator for it, and so I'm also just like the director of photography, so like making sure of what the shots were going to be. Um, and for that, I, I, was, I was using a uh, just like a DSLR camera and some lenses. I have a few lenses to choose from. And I had uh, so much creative brain with this that I was trying to make the most artsy shots that I possibly could um, and film the entire thing in black and white. Uh, just a fun experience to, to get through just because like, having that artistic freedom and just being able to make the craziest video that I possibly can it was a blast. It was a nice experience. Okay. So, um, Disney has been making a lot of remakes of their old movies. So, this was my question. I finally remembered it. Would you be open to being in one? And if you had a choice, which one would you be in? Like, if there were any Disney movie they were remaking? I wish that I actually had been a little older for the Tarzan remake. Because... Tarzan is my start, you know? That's, like, where I kind of got into professional acting with. Um, I would be down for any of them, honestly. I don't discriminate against it. So, Jane? (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Um, But for me, what it is is, um, is I do find it interesting that they're remaking all of their projects into uh, live-action pieces. It makes me nervous. I will say, just because uh, all of these movies that you and I and Joe from down the street have grown up with are, you know, they're originals, and they, they've they been out for years. Like, Snow White came out in, what, 30, 38, 39? First ever animated right. film. Right, yeah, and it came out a long time ago. Um, animated film in color, right? I think, yeah, yeah. yeah. Full-length animated film in color. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was a really long time ago and we have all grown up and we've all seen them but now it's kind of like uh, with these new ones uh, the kids may not actually see the older ones they may just see these new live action films Uh, and that's like you know it's not a problem I get it things change it's just a little interesting and it's odd and it's a little Mm -hmm. sad but at the same time it could be where it gets people to watch the older ones like there could be a kid who watches it and really likes, oh, there's a new Snow White remake. Oh, I'm watching it. Wait, it was a cartoon? Oh, I want to see that now or something. Right, and that's the <laughs> hard point. Mm-hmm. It, you know, it's getting a lot more difficult with, like, you, what, it, we got to make sure that these uh, these older cartoon versions of the film gets brought up to whatever the newest form of uh, media is going to be. Whether it's like, you know, we have to be able to know that we can direct download the, uh, the films or if they're all going to be on microchip soon. You know, we have them on DVD, uh, but some of them are still on VHS. I don't have a VHS player anymore. That, those DVDs that I, uh, sorry, those VHS tapes that I have, I can't watch them, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, I, I know that my sister still has a VCR and 
and she uses all of the old VHS tapes. And now with now you know they are being released out of the vault one at a time, so you can get them on DVD. It's just yeah, I don't know. It's like whenever the next new media comes out, like are the kids going to be able to see all of them? Mm-hmm. Or are they just going to be able to see like this year's remake of Beauty and the Beast? Yeah, like yeah, I don't know. And it, also, there's just the fact that our expectations for films have actually increased quite a bit. So those older classic, really, really fun films are gonna might be looked down upon by our new standard of just like everything's got to be this specific way. And if it's, like, a bit more... Like, everything has to be super deep. It has to be very complex. But it, So if it's a little bit more shallow, like some of those older films, they had one point they wanted to make, and they made it. Uh, but right. if, it, if it doesn't meet those qualifications, then no one's going to like it. Well, okay, so now we, we have this formula uh, for script writing. Um, it's called Save the Cat. Okay? And the way it, the way it works is there's like all of the popular films that you see like literally every Marvel film every like film that you see that is a blockbuster in the theaters right now probably uses Save the Cat what it is is like page 12 by this time have your character introduced with their problem page 14 introduce a problem that will occur later on page 21 enemy takes over page 33 uh, enemy has like big fight with this it's it's very formulaic. And older films don't have that formula. Right. Or if they do, it's the prerequisite to it. It is what made the formula what it is. And so it's not seen as just like A, B, C, D, E. It's like, it's interesting and it's fun. And that's why, like, modern day films, like, you go out and you watch a bunch of films and all of a sudden, like, you're able to be like, oh, yeah, he's going to, yep, see? told you, knew he was going to do that. Yeah, obviously, it's following the same exact formula. Uh, uh, so I started writing some scripts just for fun. There is literally a plug-in in one of the, uh, in one of the script writing uh, uh, softwares that allows, it, 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 it pops up a little message every single time that you get to the page where Save the Cat should come in. And it'll, it'll, like, like, you'll get to page five, five and it's like, like hey, remember, remember to introduce your main character's flaw. What? Like, why? I want that freedom myself, not the formula that everybody uses. So that, that, I mean, that's my issue with it, and that's why it's like older films, like Snow White, yeah, it doesn't really follow the formula. The formula wasn't made then. It followed a formula, and you could break it down, but it's different, and it follows its own path that kind of keeps that story driving. So at the same time, it feels a little bit less... Like, it doesn't fulfill what people are expecting in a film that we go to today, but at the same time, it's a breath of fresh, it's a breath of fresh air. Uh, right. What, what, I, what I think about it is that it, it can let people down until a certain point when people are going to be too fed up with, like, knowing everything that happens right away. It, the universe seems to be very cyclical, right? So they'll, it'll come back. It, it'll circle around. Just give it time. People will be into the old stuff again. Yes, the age of hipsters all the time. Just let them find the right era. They'll make it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Any more questions? Yes. Okay, uh, which do you prefer? Acting or writing? Acting. I'm not a great writer. English has never been my thing. I'm always more math science. English, I can't. I can't look at it for too long. My boy. <laughs> yeah. I I hate. Yeah. Okay. If you were to suggest to anyone which field, like, which field brings you the most... If you were to t- tell someone that was in the filmmaking industry, um... What, what you think the first step in moving away from acting and towards the wider variety of filmmaking, what would you su- suggest them do? Talk to everybody. Um, honestly, that's, that's one of the best ways. Because literally, at, like, at least specifically here in Los Angeles, everybody is always doing something. So let's say you're an actor in something, right? You talk with some people and you're just like, hey, I want to get experience doing this, or I want to try doing this. 
I want to learn editing, somebody will know something and just talk with them and say, hey, if you need anybody to shadow, like, I will, like, watch you work for a day. And sometimes they'll, like, help you out and give you some work to do. And uh, you can just be like, hey, I would love to, like, intern over here, or can I PA on this, or can I try visiting you this day? Uh, that's, like, the best way. I literally call people up all the time, like, hey, do you mind if I come watch you work for, like, an afternoon? I go and watch, I talk with them, I talk with everybody there, speaking to, and then I get asked to do things. Uh, when you get asked to do things, then you get asked to come back and do different jobs, and you just talk with people. Creating connections is everything. Socialization is how you do that. Uh, and that pretty much goes for most most kind of jobs. Yeah, it's it's the whole, I mean, in one way, it is the whole idea of schmoozing your way over, but I mean, in a way, it's just letting people know, hey, I'm interested in this. I'm not just here going through the motions. It's also just sort of the concept of gaining XP throughout throughout the years, and you're and you're doing it by being around other people. So, in sure. so you're accomplishing both learning how to do stuff and meeting people who know how to do that stuff. Sure. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for joining us. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Uh, sorry about the wait. I'm glad we were able to make it happen, though. Mm-hmm. Yes. Thank you. Um, you can follow him on all his social media accounts. He has Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. He has his website. I'm sure he has other links things as in the well. description. Uh, please check out the two movies he mentioned that I forget the names of. Uh, please help uh, support the filmmakers and please uh, help him to just help get his name out there. Hashtag, Hashtag Deb did it first, first and have a really, really, really random day. day.